Hello, Options Traders. Welcome, everyone, and a very special welcome to all of the new subscribers for this week. We had quite a few. And one of the most common questions that I get from new traders is why are there so many S&P 500 expirations? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, pull up your broker's platform and look. You're going to see there are a ton of them, some of them only a day apart. And traders are going, well, I'm not seeing these on my equities, on my Microsofts and Apples. Why is it just for the S&P 500? Well, let's take a look. First of all, let's talk a little bit about the equity options or the stock options. These generally expire on the third Friday of the expiration month. Now, most of the bigger stocks or popular ones will also have weeklies, which expire every single Friday. If you happen to have a weekly that would expire on the same Friday, that third Friday, then just the quarterly contract would be traded. However, it is always on a Friday that it is your last day to buy, sell, or exercise your contract. Technically, you could exercise it at any time because your equity options are what are called American style, which again means that you are allowed to exercise them at any time, but that is rarely going to be to your advantage, and I've addressed that in previous videos. But something else that most people don't realize is that your equity options are always PM expiration. And that means that you are allowed to trade them all the way through the close of that trading day on Friday. Now that again is going to be coming up as a future video. But for right now, we're just going to concentrate on why there are so many different expirations. But I just wanted to point that out for now, why you have to be so careful when you're trading index options. So again, these are the general rules for your equity options. But for index options, they are the exceptions and they may expire on different days. And as I just pointed out, they also might expire at different times. So let's take a look at the S&P 500 index or the SPX for this video here. Now, of course, when we're trading the SPY, it is an ETF version of this, but the SPX and the SPY will still share the same expiration dates. So for the S&P 500, you're always going to have a quarterly expiration or a third Friday, but then in 2005, they came out with the weeklies, just like they did for the equities. So that always brought in a Friday expiration for every week. But then in 2015, they came out with an end of month contract, something interesting you don't see with any of the other contracts. It expires, as the name implies, on the last business day of the month. And they did this primarily to assist some of the bigger institutions with some of their hedging transactions who might be trying to close out their books at certain, maybe a fiscal quarter. So they came out with these for the S&P 500. And then in February of 2016, they came out with Wednesday weeklies. And then about six months later, they came out with Monday weeklies. So you've got weeklies now that expire on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then you also have the end of month contracts. Let's take a little closer look at the weekly options because they can be confusing as well. For a Monday weekly, it is always listed on the previous Friday, at least the week prior. Sometimes new traders think if they want to trade a Monday weekly, they have to wait for Monday for it to be listed. And that's not true. It's listed the previous Friday. And then it expires that following Monday. So you really get six business days to trade it. If you are looking for a Wednesday weekly, it is listed on Tuesday of the previous week. And if you want to trade a Friday weekly, the one that's been around the most, they are listed on Thursday. Something else important to understand is that if there are holidays, options generally expire one day sooner. So if you're trading the Wednesday contract and that happens to be a holiday, it would expire on Tuesday. If it's a Friday contract, it would expire on Thursday. The exception is for Monday contracts, which expire one day later for obvious reasons. If Monday's a holiday, it can't expire on Sunday when the markets are closed. So that's one of the few exceptions when a holiday is going to push that expiration date one day forward. So back to the S&P 500 or the spiders. The SPY is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500, but it trades like shares of stock. So it's going to have all of the properties of regular stock options. It's going to be American style. It's going to be PM settlement, but it's also going to have many more expirations. So let's jump over to the E-Trade platform and take a look 
at some of the equity options versus the S&P 500. So here's the E-Trade platform, and I'm going to start with an equity option. So I've got Google up here. And the first thing that you'll notice is that, at least for E-Trade, they put the expirations either in this purple color or in gray. Also notice that if they are in this purple color, we've got the month, the day, and the year. And if they're in gray, we just have the month and the year. So any of these in purple are the weeklies or the extended weeklies. These expire on Friday, but just at different times. So this right here, the Feb 28th, expires in five days. And therefore, this one's going to expire in 12 days, seven days later. And you can see it right there in that pop-up window. The March 13th is going to be seven days later on the 19th. And without even looking at a calendar, I can tell you that the quarterly contract right here must be on March 20th because that's just seven days after this one. But if you're unsure, pull up a calendar and take a look at the third Friday of March and you'll see that it is on the 20th. So this pattern continues. We've got a couple more of what are called extended weeklies out here. And then once we hit these in gray, these are just the regular quarterly contracts that will expire on the third Friday. So when traders are new, a lot of times this is kind of the expiration board that they're used to seeing. But watch what happens when we jump over to the S&P 500. So I'm going to come up here and let's start with the SPY. Now take a look at this. I'm going to slide over here and look at all of the different expirations out here. So many more. So if we come back here, I've got some that expire on Feb 24th in one day. This is the Monday contract. And then look at this, two days later, Feb 26th. This is the Wednesday contract. And then on Feb 28th, that's the Friday contract. So then we jump into March. We've got March 2nd, March 4th, March 6th. So let's just pull up a calendar just so we can see it. So I'm going to bring this up to March. And here we can see March 2nd is a Monday and that corresponds to March 2nd right there. And then Wednesday is the 4th and that corresponds to March 4th right there. And then Friday the 6th is the Friday expiration right there. But then notice we also have a March 9th, which is the Monday expiration, March 11th, which is Wednesday, and a March 13th, which is Friday. So that pattern is going to continue all the way down. However, we're also going to have a Monday expiration on the 30th, but we're also going to have an end of month on the 31st. So let's drop this calendar, and there you can see the March 30th. That is the Monday expiration, and then we have the end of month on the 31st. So hopefully that gives you some of the insights and a little bit of the history why we have so many expirations for the S&P 500. Now just for a little look ahead, let's come up here to the SPX, the actual index, and you will see the exact expiration dates for the SPY. But notice here, we also have a March 20th AM and a March 20th PM. So when you're dealing with the actual indexes, not the ETFs, you have to be doubly careful because you also have morning settlements and evening settlements. But that'll be a topic for a future video. And for those who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. I also have some mini courses, such as those on the Greeks and volatility for those who want more focused studies. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.